Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, an ex-wife. Her name is Ronnie Bennett, and she runs a blog called timegoesby.net, which you should go to right now. Don't even listen to it. Just go to that site. <laughs> right. Hello, Ronnie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's morning well, where I am uh, still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is morning where you are, uh, which is in uh, Lake Oswego, which is near Portland. Oregon. Oregon. Not to be confused with Portland, Maine, or other Portland. Where, which was the other place you lived. I mean, it's yes, like yes, I did. And you I were, moved from Portland to Portland. You were born in Portland, wound up in Portland, Maine, then went to Portland, Oregon. Are there any other Portlands you haven't gone to yet? I haven't ever visited. The, I, if I remember correctly, there are six or seven or eight Portlands in the United States, but those are the only two I've ever been to. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So um, how is how is everything going with you? It's going just fine. Uh -huh. How about oh. yeah? How about yeah. Your, how about your health and everything like that? Yeah, I had to talk with the doctor last oh, week. Oh yes, you were going to go talk to the doctor. How did that turn out? Uh, ambiguous. It, ambiguous. It just just what they're surprised you're still alive or what? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I mean, it, which is kind of a surprise to me. As we've said, I'm on golden time. But, um, you know, it was discussion of when to do the next CT scan. Yeah. And uh, that's the one that they can tell what's been going on with the cancer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've been kind of enjoying my free time for three months. So I decided to put it off for a month just so I could have free time <laughs> from yeah. having to think about that yeah and uh and you know we discussed that if it's growing rapidly what what can and can't be done yeah and um you know what the whole purpose of putting it off was not to think about it so <laughs> <laughs> so in other words you got no definitive answers on any of this you know. Well, they, they can't look at your face and tell, you know? Yeah, yeah, they should be able to. You should be looking gaunt and on your last leg, and you aren't. Well, you know, I keep saying if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. I, although, I got to tell you, I mean, I uh, don't, this uh, doesn't even apply to you, but I had a friend a few years back, Steve Gruber, who died of uh, lung cancer. And the night before he died, you would have never thought he'd be dead the next day. You know, I mean, he was all piss and vinegar, and he wanted to get out of the hospital, and he didn't want to be there. And, uh, you know, and you're going, and then I get a call. He's dead. And I go to the hospital. There he is, lying in bed, dead. You know, and I'm going, how did that happen? You know, I was talking to him yesterday. So, you I know. I think that for, for, you know, the people who not, the ones not doing the dying at the moment, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're right. That's really hard. I mean, what's the dividing line? What changed? He just didn't take a next breath. And, uh, you know, both of my parents, that yeah. I took care of my mother for several months before she died yeah. and visited with my dad. And um, they looked sick mm -hmm. at the end. And, so, and I look at... You know, when you're a younger woman, you look at your face and you look in the mirror and you put mm -hmm. on your makeup and you wonder if you're pretty enough to go out in the world. Mm -hmm. um, I look now and I say, I look in the mirror and I say, do I look like I'm sick? Am I getting sick or does it show in my face? It's a, a different question. Well, I mean, even, e even your, uh, your breathing problem has seemed to have gotten better. You don't. Well, that's the, the, I can only sing the praises of the rehab nurses. Yeah, um, they taught me how to do that, and taught me that you have to exercise because otherwise the lungs are just going to collapse down. So, um, you know, I did. They're they're the best. I had, I didn't have a whole lot of faith that that could do me any good, and it just miracles. It really made a difference. Well, I mean, so here you are. You're getting better every day. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but like your friend, <laughs> we don't know about tomorrow morning. <laughs> you know, she, 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 well, you know, I mean, on the other hand, I had a friend die recently, Jack Garfine, and he didn't look too good the day before. Okay, well, wasn't he a whole lot older than your other friend? Uh, who, Jack Garfine? 
Yeah. Garfine was uh, 89. I don't know. I don't consider I have two friends who are in there who are both 94, so I don't consider that maybe so old anymore. Well, you know what's <laughs> interesting, you know, and you do things about age. Um, Jack has a, a friend, oddly enough, named Jack, and both of them are survivors of the concentration camps, okay? That's how they're, they became friends in the concentration camp. Uh, you look at Jack, my Jack, and he just was he was he was he was really falling apart. He looked old, he looked tired, he looked sick, you know, whatever. You look at the other Jack, who's approximately the same age, went through the same life experience, and he looks like he's seventy five. Well, know? that goes back to what I've been saying all this time I've been writing this damn Bob is that we age individually at entirely different rates. Your age doesn't have a whole lot to do with that. You know, one of the funny things about what we look at what age yeah. is the older I get, mm. the younger young people look. So I look at some of the, particularly the women, but some of the guys too, young people on uh, TV news like MSNBC and CNN and they're the ones that are out in the field following all the candidates around. Yeah. And I think those people aren't out of high school yet. They're so young looking. Right. <laughs> Right, and the older I get, the more that happens, and it just I used to, uh, I used to ref- just don't look grown up enough to be doing that job. <laughs> I used to refer to it uh, as the teenage news uh, because these newscasters were getting younger and younger and, and younger, you know, and, and and it's not them; it's us; it's our perception. We're growing older and older and older. Um, and they keep looking younger and younger but, and younger. But you know, there was a time when, uh, even when I was, even when I was younger, in my forties and fifties, when I got stopped by a twenty-two-year-old cop for a ticket, and he gave me a lecture. I felt, <laughs> you know, I felt well. Screw you, you know. I mean, how dare you give me a lecture? You're you you punk. All right, uh, but now. I'm going, how dare you tell me the news? <laughs> and the thing is, you know, if you go check Wikipedia on any of those people, they're like 28, 30, 34. I mean, they're grown-ups. They've been doing their job for a number of years. Yeah. They've got experience. Yeah. But they look like they're still in high school. Yeah. yeah. To me, I don't think they do to people their so, own age. So I started watching, uh, I think it was CNN in the mornings, and I just said, it, it looks like it's the teenage news. It, it just, you know, <laughs> and I, I was in my seven sixties, maybe late sixties when I said that. So, you know, <coughs> whatever. So, uh, but you know, I mean, I, you know, these young punks, what the hell? Uh, but they can, they can also, I, I don't know if at my age I would want to slog around in the wintry snows of New Hampshire, you know? You know, it's not that it's being on the road forever. We, uh, the, the, the primary season is so bloody long and shouldn't be that you just you hardly ever get to go home and you're and you're always running for a bus or an airplane or where's the hotel what did i leave in the hotel i mean what i never had to travel at that rate of constant on the move and be producing something in between um and i i don't think i i just think that's so exhausting you gotta be young to do it yeah yeah, well, I mean, you know the guy. I, you know this guy is on NBC and does the uh, uh, all all the reporting from war zones. Oh, uh, Engel, it, Richard it, Engel. He's a wonderful Engel. reporter. Yeah, yeah, he's a wonderful reporter. Although we're sitting around waiting for the day we hear he got killed. I mean, he goes into these just. Who absolute, does that? No, you don't. No, no. I've no, never no, had that thought in my life. Well, he's about in, him. he's in such dangerous situations. You go, yeah. how, you know, how did, is he yes. going to survive this? I mean, we had, we had one newscaster who was it uh, over at ABC who, who got really shot up really badly or roadside bomb or whatever, and pretty much is out of the uh, broadcast business now. Remember? Uh, no. He was the anchor of these ABC evening news and he got blown up by a roadside bomb. I, you know, the last time I saw, the evening news of any network must have been 20 years ago. Yeah. I've never tuned it yeah. in since. Yeah. But uh, by, I mean, by the time they do it, the news is over and on to something else. But so I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a news reporter. Send me, to, send me to New Hampshire. Don't send me to Syria. Okay? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I, 
Reporters have been going to war for as long as there have been wars. You know something? There are people like Richard Engel who that they I think there's a certain love for it. You know, a, a certain love of the danger and also of getting the story on, in spite of all things. You know what I'm saying? No, I mean, I mean, yes, I mean, but that that's yeah. the thing is that I, I I I'm sorry, I don't. I'm I'm trying to figure out why you're kind of surprised. It's always been that way, at least to World War One and probably in the Civil War and. Who knows before the well, revolution, you know, during the In those the cases, we were talking war. about world wars, which were so predominant that they were almost at our shores. Uh, I mean, you, have, you had reporters during World War II. Uh, kids, you're not going to remember this at all. Ernie Pyle, as an example, who was a war mm -hmm. correspondent, very famous for it and being in the, in the midst of it all and writing about it, writing about the GIs in, in very poetic terms. Um, but these things, you know, you, you really just, uh, you go, wow, you know, th how that Richard Engel survives all these things. I mean, there are bombs going off I, all you around You know, I'm so him. surprised you're surprised. If I were a young woman, and now that women can do those things because they didn't used to be, back in those days when we were young, women weren't allowed. They weren't hired for jobs like that. But now there are plenty of women reporting from war zones. And if I were young and a reporter... I would want to be there in today's world. I would want to be in the Middle East. Okay, that and and that all well and good, but also there's another aspect to Richard Engel. He's married, and I think he has a newly born a, a new child. He may have a second one there. I don't know, but when you suddenly have a family, do you want to put yourself in this kind of danger? You know, and I I, I think that you're falling victim to the, oh, my God, we must be safe. Do, can we get out all of right, bed, check right. the floor? Let's put it in a, in a more, uh, uh, something may hit home better. Let's say you were married to Richard Engel, okay? How would that you doesn't mean I wouldn't worry, but it wouldn't. I, if that's what he does, more power to him. He's, he's, he's doing a terrific wow. job. I depend oh, on Engel. Oh, I listen, I think, he's, I, think, on. I think he's one of the few good reporters we have right now. You know, well, let's not go there. That's just too boring. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's too boring. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Everybody's a critic. Yeah, you've never done that kind of work. You don't know. Yeah, I guess, I guess. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I've gone, I've gone to the snows of New Hampshire and the the snows of Iowa during an election year, and uh, uh, it's it's it's, fa it's fascinating. But I don't have to do it every week. You know, and these guys are out there day in, day out. And there were the other reporters who aren't even reporting uh, the uh, uh, the election. They're reporting. There's one guy over at NBC who's always, always somewhere. I mean, he's reporting something in Tibet. The next day he's reporting something in Omaha. You know, and I'm going, these guys don't get off an airplane. You know, but that's what they do. That's what they, that's what they do. And but how long can you do that? Could you do that at 50? Could you Many do that do. at 60? Yes. Could you do it at 70? I couldn't do it at, at my age. At my age, you can barely get me out of the damn house. But nobody asks you to or, the, or anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I missed the point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, 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 but it, you, uh, you said you had a couple of things you wanted to talk about. I want to ask you about something. Okay. I wrote a blog post yesterday mm -hmm. on something that just really annoys me and has annoyed me for years is the phrase successful aging. And my first response, it's been around for 15 or 20 years, and this, in the last few years been gaining momentum. I went to Amazon to see how many books were titled um, successful aging, mm -hmm. And I stopped counting at 24. It, there were more, but I just got bored with counting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, and my, my first response is always this, as opposed to what? <laughs> um, I mean, unsuccessful aging? And what, what could that possibly yeah, be? What is and successful aging? Read these books, yeah, yeah. what they're mostly telling you is... Eat your vegetables and get your exercise 
and do all the things they tell us old people to do. And I can get that information from many, probably hundreds of reliable sources. There's more than that, enough of that information. So they're saying to successfully age, you have to see your doctor, eat good food, mm -hmm. walk around a little bit, you know, all the stuff they tell us. And I don't get it. I just... It makes no sense to me. I think some people age and and they and they have all kinds. Of, you know, I don't think that if you uh, if you go by some of these people who say, well, you know, eat your vegetables and work out three times a week and do 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 a brisk walk once a day or something like that, that that's going to keep you from getting anything. No, 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 no. That's not the question. The que we're not talking about getting sick. We're talking about successful aging. And what in the world does anybody think it means? Well, you know, you know. I'll take, let me give you let me give you an example of something similar that always used to tick me off, and that was when people uh, on television would say, "And how old are you?" And the person would go, "I'm 85," and the whole audience would applaud. Yeah. What did they? What did they but have to do to get about, the uh, 85? I, I'm going to stick to successful aging because we're not. You're not doing this right <laughs> oh okay uh, you, hey, that's um, that's the that's the producer in her by the way that's the producer i'm sorry i didn't hear that you're the that's the producer in you that's not what we're talking about we have to get back to the subject matter uh, Alex, but i'm not allowed this. to talk in your ear you know <laughs> let me talk in your ear uh, <laughs> um it, it it is it's it's ubiquitous in the community of Aging, mm -hmm. successful aging. Well, you know, what could that mean? Um, if you're sick, well, I'm sick. Am I a failed, a if I'm, am I failing aging? Um, or what if you're homeless? Uh, you know, the, all of these books, all these articles tell you to do all these things to be a successful, to be successful at aging. But they're all about, if you're talking about being sick or, well, being sick, you have almost no control over. But if something, it's like homeless or something, um, the time to fix that was many years ago. There's not much you can do it if you're old and homeless. Um, and I'm not so sure it's always your fault. Yeah. Um, and so the idea of successful aging presupposes there's something unsuccessful aging or failed aging mm -hmm. which i don't think is possible well you know i mean what you're talking about too is i think it, it's a term uh that's a marketable term oh here's a book on successful aging you know you know that doesn't excuse it no it doesn't excuse it but i'm saying they... i'm saying that it becomes a catchphrase and it's meaningless and it tells people that you're doing something wrong yeah yeah yeah. And I don't think there's anything you can anything you can do wrong to age unsuccessfully. Yeah. Um isn't it isn't it just the luck of the draw? You know? No, no, no. Now when you say that, now then you're thinking that sick people just got the bad end of the straw. I'm not talking of I don't think being sick makes you a failure at aging. Okay. But I mean, what we're doing is we're what, what, what you what you want to do is you want to define successful aging, and maybe there shouldn't be any such term. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah there just shouldn't be any such it term. It just keeps ballooning everywhere I turn. There, are online articles, magazine articles, newspapers, and more books. A new one just came out. Well, you, you know why you see those books and why you see those uh, articles is because we're probably getting an older population that's larger. And so it's a marketable, at least in books and in uh, in writings and things like that, it's a more, very marketable term uh, because most people go, oh, my God, I'm aging. I'm 80 years old. What do I do? Oh, here, hey, here's a book on successful aging. You I'll read that. Do people do that? Oh, yeah. I think people, you know, they are, number one, most people are, are deadly afraid of getting older. Uh, uh, and they begin to see that things that once used to go up are going down, all right? And uh, uh, it, it can start to panic you after a while. Um, once I reached 80, 
I suddenly realize that all the aches and pains I have, and I go, why do I have this, is because I'm 80 years old. Right. And, and, and thank God for that, because how many people do I know didn't make it to 80? You know, I, every week I, you, you hear about it too. You hear about people you know who died, all right? Uh, and and um, so y- you have to take it on, on that. And I, I just go, what's successful aging? I guess that's it. you can keep breathing, you know? I mean, but it takes no talent. It takes no ability. And there's no book but, that can that tell you how to do it. that isn't even my question. I don't, it, it's the, I don't know where it originated. I've, I've seen it growing Mm-hmm. Used more meaning used more frequently yeah. over the last fifteen years or so, and it it is so empty. And it is, all, but what it also does is, if you're not inclined to think it through like I am, because I have to try to make sense of it on writing, you know, so yeah. I have put a different kind of thought to it than when I'm just skimming a story. Um, it it implies quite strongly that you're doing something wrong yeah, about getting yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so and then their solution is eat your vegetables. That's right, right. Successful. Um, uh, how about unsuccessful? If it were about health, and that yeah. doesn't seem to be the point either. And I don't know that there's anything you can do wrong about aging. Well, there's nothing you're going to do that's going to also stop the effects of it. Sometimes you uh, don't uh, like uh, my my wife. Okay, she, uh, she works out if she can three times a week for about three hours a day. I mean, she does an hour on the bike. She does speed cycling, all of that, right? Mm. The, the, she is an absolute adrenaline junkie, all right? She's got more things wrong with her <laughs> than I've got wrong with me. You can't connect them. You can't say they're wrong because she rides a bicycle for an hour. No, I'm not saying that uh, causes it. I'm saying well, that... that, that, did, that no, what I'm there. saying is that didn't help it, Okay. You don't know that. All right. So, um, uh, okay, we've established that Ronnie hates the term successful aging. <laughs> I guess that's what we've determined. I'm sorry. Say what again? I, I didn't, that Ronnie, I, Ronnie does not like the term successful aging. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I just, I think it's so crazy that it just keeps growing when, and even if I take... It as being a marketing phrase that just marketers made something up that sounded good and doesn't have any meaning, which is true of a lot of marketing phrases. Yeah. Um, even if I take that as part of it or a strong part of it, why would you put a marketing phrase out there that makes people feel bad about themselves? Let me, let me the whole add, point of okay. selling stuff is to make people feel good about let, themselves. Let, let me ask you this. If tomorrow we decided that Ronnie Bennett was going to start a podcast, okay? Oh, no, she's not. <laughs> no, no, but but she she was going to start a podcast, and it was simply called Successful Aging. Mm, not me. Wait a minute. You can't get me on that show. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm just, this is a suppose. Now go along with me on my suppose. Suppose you did all those things. Do you think you get more people listening to you than read your blog? I think you would. Maybe. I, I think don't you know, would. but I'm not, I can't do that because I don't know. I can't talk about it. There's nothing to say. It's empty. I know. There's a whole box. You label uh, it successful aging and you open up the box and there's nothing in it. Yeah, but you're not, you're not into marketing yourself and, and making money off that marketing. You get what I'm saying? You're an ethical person. You don't need phrases like successful aging to try and tell people. You just it, Time goes by dot net. It says everything about it. But it, it's not going to attract somebody who's sitting there going, boy, I'm having more aches and pains lately, and I hate this getting old. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a site called successful aging. No, wait, 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 that's really interesting. So you go immediately from I hurt, I'm sick, to, oh, successful aging will help me. Yeah. How? I don't know, but I'm saying that if it if they're saying this term a lot, it's got to be a marketable term, okay? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know who's labeling the magazine articles or who's writing yeah, the but, headlines. But you get what I'm saying. I mean, it's a marketing but, thing. It's absolutely a marketing thing. Well, it's just stupid. 
Yeah. And since I've got so much invested in aging in general well, after uh, all these years. <laughs> and you've paid the price for it, too. You've, you've gotten all the life experience you want to know about aging, you know? And you're not, I, repeat that. I think you, I was. You, you've gotten all the all the information you need about aging from just your life experience right now with getting sick and this and that and the breathing and so on. Uh, and uh, you know, so um, uh, you've aged successfully. You realize that? <laughs> I may what? You've aged successfully. Well, I don't even know what that means. I just aged. <laughs> okay. My favorite was a reader who left this comment. Her name was Susan. She used just an R for her last name, just mm -hmm. an initial. She said, as long as, um, as long as you're above ground and breathing, you're aging successfully. Well, that's, that's, and I yeah. think that's all it needs to be. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's no penalty or... There's no way to fail aging. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's just, and, and that's what I dislike about, I wasn't real clear in what I wrote yesterday. Um, it's what I object to so strongly, <clears throat> is that you put the idea, by using that phrase, you put the idea in people's head that they're, maybe they're unsuccessful at it. Well, what you're doing is you're saying by successful aging, you're implying <clears throat> that there is a alternative which is unsuccessful aging. But you're not saying that. But I know it's I know it I, I know it's pissing you off. You know, a lot of things piss you off. But I know <laughs> <laughs> I know that not one. So much in I, my own. I, I, I know what it's all about, and you have every right to be uh, irritated by it. And I agree with you. You know, <laughs> I just would like it please to disappear. It's I just you know, place. as I said, I go, I go back to those times that they they have somebody and they go, "How old are you?" And they go, "I'm I'm 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 85." And everybody applauds. And I go, you know, I don't know that that deserves applause. I mean, oh, let me tell you something else. You know, you no, just had. I, to, I agree with you too. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's as important as successful aging problem. Um, I'm kidding you about that. But the other one that bothers me, have you noticed President Trump does it, but long before he came along, all kinds of people who stand on stages do whatever they do on stages. It happens to them. They say something, and the audience applauds, and they applaud. Well, what are they applauding? I hate they people. I, I, now you've talked about something which gripes me, and that's people who, when they get up on stage and people applaud them, also applaud. That's well, what I just yeah, said. Yeah, I, that just absolutely drives me nuts. Why? You're applauding your, they're applauding you, and you're applauding yourself? It makes no sense. I know, yeah. and that's new. It didn't always, wasn't always that way in my life. And also, as a producer, a person who produced TV shows, it had to drive you crazy when people did that because they were also doing it on their mic that was on their chest. Nobody ever did that when I was producing television. <laughs> Not one single. In those days, nobody did that. Were you a successful producer? <laughs> well, no, it's not about that. It's that, what, is that something in the culture changed that yeah. we applaud ourselves. Do you think it's connected to selfies? It's the same idea? Oh, that, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Maybe that's where it well, comes Maybe from. that's where it comes from, but it, it, it also is that people just... Just applaud for the weirdest, strangest things. You're 85, so they applaud. Actually, they should say, boy, are you lucky. You know, you when know? I lived in New York, 40-odd years worth, yeah, yeah. every Broadway show I ever went to, every single one, no matter how awful it was, they got a standing ovation at the end. Do you know something? Not, You're absolutely... Every, every, and I decided then... That the reason was is that everybody wanted to go home and tell their friends that the show was so good they got a standing ovation. Oh, when you're paying $150 for the seat, you're going to believe anything about that <laughs> show. You know, I you think know, that's you, low you, these you, days. you don't want to have buyer's remorse. You know, that's, that's why I hate uh, <laughs> reviewers of like Broadway shows and movies because they get in for free and they don't have to pay the $150 to see that Broadway show. If they did, they might be a little more critical of it. You know? Well, but I mean, but all those people who did pay that much stood up yeah. at the end. Yeah. But anyway, you're absolutely right. They all stand up and applaud. I, I'm wondering if they're applauding 
just the fact that people got up and performed a show. <laughs> and, the the it, fact that they walked and memorized their lines. Well, that they, they got up and they performed a show. You know, they, the show may have been a bad show, but they gave it their best. And so they want to, you know, give them well, that. Well, applauding is, used to be perfectly good, you know. But now everyone has to, they stand up forever and ever and applaud. Oh, boy. Well, hey, listen, we've... we've See, this is what it means. When you get old, you start realizing that all of these, th you know, I should have called myself crabby old lady today. Um, all these things. Yeah. You keep finding these things that drive you crazy when you get old. Apparently, we have too much time on our hands, well, I think. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I could, we could go into all the health stuff and all, all that and the things within that whole society that kind of get to you. But we'll do that another time. Thank you so much. I love these little discussions we have with each other and talking with the crabby old lady. <laughs> yes, Ladies and gentlemen, that, she's a crabby old lady. that's Ronnie Bennett, no relation any longer, which she is thankful for. And uh, we, uh, uh, she can be found at uh, 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 timegoesby.net. Can I say one thing about that? Sure. What you just said? Mm -hmm. Do you know that you're the only person alive who's known me this long? Well, then I guess I have a... And that somehow means something to me. Yeah. I mean, well, actually, let me think about it. Hold on a second. Yes, I think you are, too, to me. You mean for you, too? Yeah, yeah. I met you when I was 17. And I met you when I was about, what, 18, uh, 19, 20, something like that. 18, 19, 20, somewhere yeah, in there. Yeah, well, one, one year, anyway, uh, I can't think of anybody else because the people I did know all have died. You know, like I had a friend, Roy Trumbull, in high school. Mm -hmm. He died. Uh, that would be maybe the oldest guy if he were still a person, if he were still alive. What about John, I don't remember his last name, who lived in Boston? Bayless? John Bayless, I think so. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but I, I you know, it's like, I, if, if he is alive, I haven't talked to him since high school. Okay, so I haven't known him since high school. Okay. No, because he came to visit us when we were married. Oh, okay. But I, you know, I, I, I have, I'm talking to you right now, and we go back that far. So, and, I, I, you know, since my mother died, mm -hmm. I think nobody's known me longer. Mm. God, that's, it, well, you know, it, it's a testament to the fact that we're still talking to each other. We were married, and we're still talking to each other. Yeah. We weren't for a I while. don't know why that's important, but it is. I think it's important. It's you know, it's important to me. Uh, sometimes my wife says to me, "Oh, you're talking to that old girlfriend again?" And I went, "Yeah, I stay friends with people I may have had a relationship with, but that doesn't mean I don't stay friends. It's just that my needs and their needs went in different directions, you know. And and I take great pride in the fact that there are quite a few girlfriends and and ex wives." <laughs> that I still talk to. I think it's uh, I think it's a testament to me because I have engendered such a decent relationship with them while we were together, and I I think it's a testament to them that they they're still stupid enough to keep talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone way over, huh? Oh God, have we gone way? Well, screw it. You know, uh, I, otherwise I got to go talk to people and. Um, Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I have to go back to writing. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, and uh, you know, and then I'll be able to grouse to you about if, if in a couple of weeks I'm ready to do any of this kind of thing. But I should be. They, they remember that I was told the I read on my went to my the site that my doctor has, uh, and he it, I looked up the you know the prostate seed thing brachytherapy they call it, and uh, uh, brachytherapy isn't that a cute name? Back uh, uh, where they put the seeds in, and at the very end, and and I uh, I I'm quoting it off the top of my mind. It says, "And the next day, most people can go back to doing what they normally do, whether it's going to work or playing golf." Uh, did he say that? Yeah, it says playing golf, and I'm going. I I think I played golf once in my life. What does this mean? That it, once you put the seeds in me, I'm going to have this overwhelming desire to go out and play golf? Play golf. <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. to ask you a question. Mm. 
Over your right shoulder, why do you have Coca-Cola bottles? Oh, because they all have uh, names. I, I bought them from Coke. Uh, they have Bolo on there, which was my nickname. And one says Alex, and one says Marjorie, and one says OK Mills, which is her nickname. Why do you? Why do they have your names on them? Because you could buy them that way. Oh, you, you, you could <laughs> I say, don't drink Coke, you, so I didn't Coca-Cola know. Coca-Cola had a promotion. Remember when they started putting, they put different things on bottles, like uh, for a good friend or whatever. And they came up with this campaign, and you could literally pay them to put I, names on Coca-Cola bottles. So that's that's what I did, and there they are, or over in the corner she's talking about there. So anyway. Okay, get lost. <laughs> All right. Uh, See you next time. That's Ronnie Bennett. Time goes by.net. Bye, Ronnie. Bye.